Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family and today we are bringing in our meat chickens for the year and I'm going to show you not only just how we bring them in and get them set up but the, the whole process of getting a space all ready to go for them. Okay, so you've ordered your meat chickens, right? And you're getting ready for them to arrive. But before they do, you wanna make sure that you've got everything set up before they get here. Okay, so a few things we wanna talk about about setting up for chicks. What do these baby chicks need? Because they have, one, they don't have their mama hen. Two, depending on where you live, they've traveled anywhere from one to three days to get to you if you're ordering them from a hatchery. And there are several things that they really, really need since they don't have a mama, chick to, mama chicken to take them around. Um, you're gonna need a brood house. And I'm gonna show you here in a minute, we're taking what was the old chicken coop because we moved the chicken coop into the barn and we're turning this into a brood house. And you need a few things. You need bedding. You need a good, clean bedding for them to rest on, for them to snuggle into, to absor absorb the manure. Uh, you need some heat. Usually they would be, in, in nature, they would have their mama hen to tuck them in a lot when they're little. They really have got to stay warm. So you're gonna need a source of heat, which are usually heat lamps. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute. They need to have plenty of fresh water and food and uh, enough of it for them to be able to access depending on how many chickens you have. They also, and this is really, really important, while they need fresh air and they need light, they need to be protected from the wind. These baby chicks are really, really susceptible to the wind. Um, so that's some of the core things that these chicks have got to have. You've got to have that all set up and you want to have it ready before they get here. All right, so we have just rehabbed this old chicken coop into a brood coop. And there are a few things that are really, really important. You wanna make sure you have a space that is completely enclosed and protected with no little nooks or crannies that the baby chicks can get stuck in. So you can see here, we've put in some fresh plywood around the walls in this old structure. Make sure they can't get into the walls, the cavity of the wall or anything like that. And another thing that can be really important, if you see in the corners, we've got boards put in at an angle and that's because the baby chicks sometimes they'll go into a corner and they'll they'll pile up and they'll trample each other so you want either uh you either want to you know cut off those corners make them round make them angular so there's no no tight little spot for them to get stuck in okay next you want good bait uh, bedding love wood shavings. It is a great, great way to go. You can use straw or maybe some other organic material, but the wood shavings are very easy to work with and they're very uh, absorptive. They really, really absorb the manure. And you want it uh, three to four inches to start. Depending on the size of your space, you may have to add more as you go along. This is actually a pretty big space. I was even thinking about maybe fencing it down smaller, but we, we've got about 100 chicks in here, so I think it will be fine. When you're doing baby chicks, they can start in a pretty small space, um, but you need to make sure they've got pr plenty of room to move around. They're going to stay in your brood coop, uh, depending on weather and conditions, at least two weeks, maybe three to four, uh, depending on the weather and your situation before they go out into free ranging condition or um, chicken tractoring. Okay, so the next thing you need to be concerned with getting set up is a good heat source for the chickens. They need plenty of warmth. While they still need that fresh air and light, they've got to stay warm. Most people use these heat lamps. Now you do want them adjustable. They're going to end up going a lot lower here once we get the chicks in. There's a whole lot of systems. We're just very basic here with some baling twine and a little slip knot. And we can adjust the height on these. And we'll leave them up a little higher while we're getting set up. All right, next thing, we're gonna get the water in here. Because of this bedding and because it moves around, we want something solid to put the water on. And we're gonna put in a couple water containers, fresh, clean water. Very good, all right. 
So these have got a nice solid base. We'll make sure that they can get up to them real well. Next thing we want to do is get them, get their food supply ready. And we're going to put down some newspaper first. We're going to flatten out an area. And I've got about 100 chicks and I found that two lamps works good for that. I like the water to be off to the side and the food in the middle. It's all real close and easy for them to get to. But they're brand new. They haven't walked around a whole lot. And so putting something like some newspaper down to get them through the first few days, we found really helpful. You don't have to do this, but uh, we have found it to be really, really helpful. Okay, so next we want to get them some food and we're going to supply them with about three different things to be eating. First, we want to get them a good chick starter. That is a high protein feed that is uh, in, in a smaller granules and that's about 22% protein. And so we're going to get that in some of the feeders you're going to see here. Okay. We're going to put about two of these in and you want enough for at least half of your chickens to be able to get to them at one time. So we've got about a hundred chickens. There's actually about 90 little spots here, so this is more than enough. But you want to make sure, again, that you have at least half. About the same with the water. You want at least half of your birds at one time to be able to get to it. As they grow, we'll have to replace these waters and feeders with something larger. But these are very, very accessible for the small birds. Okay, next we like to put some grit or some sand and dirt in. That's really important to get their little gizzards filled up. So we just find a good bit of good uh, sandy. It's better if it's a little sandy soil and we just sprinkle it in. And they, you'll be surprised how quickly they will get into this. And we will supply this with them for the first week or so in here. Yeah, and uh, this gets them some grit and their gizzards. And if you find any bugs, worms, it's all great. There's nothing wrong with getting them started right away. That really gets them moving. We found if we can find bugs to put in here, they get chasing them right away. And it really just helps them get active and uh, feel really at home and real natural. Um, but again, you want it on the newspaper or something like that. It just makes it a lot easier. And we also like to get some grass in there. They will eat a little bit of grass right off the bat. So we'll also sprinkle that in. This just really helps them get a good start. Okay, that's plenty. We're almost ready. A couple more things I want to talk to before we're ready for chicks to come. Um, some people add an electrolyte, um, has, sometimes has antibiotics, different things like that in the water to help the health of the chicks. Um, we don't do that anymore. Uh, we try to buy from a really good hatchery. We love the Freedom Range or hatchery. The chicks are really healthy and they really don't need a lot more help than this. They've done great with us for this operation. But some people do that. You may want to and that's just fine. Another thing is ventilation. While we want them to stay warm and out of the wind, we do want them to have plenty of ventilation. Ideally, this would have a little bit more. We've got two windows, so we do have a good cross breeze, and we've got shade trees around this building, so it's not gonna get too hot, and it's gonna stay pretty nice. Um, over the years, we'll probably enlarge these windows and give it a little more ventilation. That would be a little bit better. So just make sure they're getting fresh air. You don't want them in a stuffy, dark, place. That's what's really important to know. And with that, I think we're set up and it's about time to bring the chicks in. All right, you guys, now it's time to pick up the chicks from the post office. And depending on where you live, we like to call into the post office first, make sure they're there and they're all ready, which we've already done. And they've told us to come to the back. So we're going to go get our chicks. All right. All right. Very cool. Got a bunch of chicks. Thank you. Oh, 
All right, you guys, we've got our chicks. We've got about a hundred of them in here. Now, these guys have been traveling for a couple days. Depending on where you're ordering from, it might be a day, it might be three. And so we want to handle these guys really, really gently and get them home and get them into their place. So when you're transporting them, it's really important that they don't get a lot of wind on them. That's the big thing and that they're pretty stable. So don't stick them in the back of the truck. Uh, don't leave your windows full open. If it's really hot and you got to leave your windows open, um, just try to uh, put a little blanket over them or something. Okay, we also want them to be level, so if you got to tuck something under them a little. And drive safe. All right, so we've got our chicks and uh, we are headed home. And a couple things to think about while you're transporting them. These guys have already been traveling for a little while, depending on where you live. And uh, we just really want to make it as easy as possible. So you don't want to put them in the back of a truck or anything. Make sure they are in the cab of your car where it's not windy. Wind is really the big thing right here. Um, that wind's really hard on them. So get them into the back seat of your car, the front seat, uh, wherever you can and make sure they don't have a lot of wind on them. Make sure they're level so in your boxes aren't falling around so they're not all getting stuck in a corner. And uh, maybe drive just a little more cautious, a little slower, so that they've got an easy ride on the way home. And uh, we're gonna get there and we're gonna get them all situated here in just a minute. All right, so here's our chickies. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This is like a favorite day for the kids because the little chickies are so much fun. They're so cute. But we do have to be careful because they've already been through a lot of stress and too much handling is not good for them either. So if you've got kids involved, it's great to show them, to let them touch. How we let them touch is we let them take turns just handing them in. But we don't want to carry them off. We don't want to play with them a whole lot. That's just way too stressful at this point. So these guys are going to get to see them and they're going to help bring them in. Tristan's going to count them to make sure that we've got all of them. And occasionally uh, you get one or two that are dead. That's always a bummer. Uh, this hatchery, Freedom Ranger hatchery, we rarely have that anymore and we're so thankful. But um, let's go ahead and get in here. Watch your fingers, sweetie. Okay, I'm going to open the top. Be careful sticking a knife in there. Okay. okay, so I want you guys to listen to Rachel, okay? Rachel will help you. Okay. We'll just fold it back halfway. Hello, chickies. Hello, chick chickies. There we go. Brand new. All right, I'm going to go inside, and you guys can start handing them to me. Okay, so when we bring them in, there's a couple things where, one, I want to handle each one and just see how they're doing, make sure they're looking alive and healthy. And I like to dip their beaks in water. And people have different opinions about this. It's how we learned. Um, but they don't have a mother. They don't have anybody to show them around. So I like to real quick just dip their beaks in the water. And that just lets them know that there's water there and is helping them get familiar with their surroundings. So you don't have to do this. People have lots of success without doing it. We've always had lots of success doing this, so um, we do. You don't want to bury their face in the water or anything. You're just trying to dip their beak in real quick so they get wet. You got to remember, these chicks are out of the egg, right out of the egg. And until now, 
They've not seen anything but a, a hatchery space and a box. Oop. All right, we're halfway there. How many do we have so far? Should have about 50. 45. 45, okay. Just put another one in. Now I'm watching these guys as I'm putting them in to make sure that they're moving around. Make sure that there are none that are lethargic or uh, just not doing good. We just want to know that they're all getting moving and getting a good start. And you want to watch them a lot for the first 24 hours. Just make sure they're getting around. And the hatchery that you buy from really can make a difference. There's a lot of them out there. We used to buy from one of the really large hatcheries and we just, we had a high death rate in the box and we had a lot that didn't make it in the first day or two, even though we were doing everything we were supposed to. And uh, when we switched over, we found it went a lot better. And I think the type of breed, I, I think that the Rangers just are more robust. They seem to be to me. But everybody's, lots of people have an opinion on that. That's okay. Yeah, my chickies. You also see they're starting to gather under that heat lamp. They're going to move around here for a little bit, but then they're not used to this much movement, so they're going to get tired pretty quick, and they're going to want some warmth. And so, once we get them all in, we'll adjust those heat lamps for them. There. This one's sleepy. This one's sleepy. you guys now another tip if you're in here and you got a space like this to be careful with your movements because they'll get around you I've got several back here underneath me and I'm not ready to get up yet but you got to be really careful because your body's warm and I'm squatting here for a while and I might get some of them huddled underneath me and I sure don't want to squish one these guys are very healthy. They are just running around. That is a very good sign. All this movement is great. They're just very healthy birds. Oh, hey, where's he gonna go? He's just walking on the He's just walking, yeah. yeah. He did what? All right, last one. Tristan, how many did we have? 104. 104, all right. They sent us a few extras. They're all healthy and running around. No dead ones. Way to go, Freedom Ranger Hatchery. Thank you. Uh, just really, really healthy birds. And so we want to do a few more things here. You can see a lot of these guys are drinking already. They're over here eating. Some of them are pecking into the, the dirt and grass there. That's really good. All right, I gotta make sure these guys are getting all over the place. I don't wanna step on one. Okay, so one of the last things we wanna do is adjust the lights. And you'll have to come back and check on this. Wow, these guys are really happy. Really moving around, so you gotta be careful. Now we want the lights low enough to give them heat but not so low that it's too hot. And usually you'll have to check them a few times in the first day to get it right. And sometimes you may have to raise it during the day and lower it again at night, depending on your weather. But what we want is when the chickens settle down and want to rest, we want them to gather under the lights, but we don't want them to trample each other. If it's too high and there's not enough warmth, they'll trample each other. 
and uh, and of course they may not have enough heat. If it's too low, they'll all gather around the edges and they may not be able to get into the heat. So I start about a foot off the ground and uh, like you can see these guys here, they're really starting to pile up. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Just a little. They're gonna wanna get warm after all this activity and settle down. Lower that one a little more. Okay, well we've got our chicks in here all set up, ready to go. They're healthy, they're active. They're getting water, they're finding their food. I'm not seeing any problems. That's just a really, really good day. Um, I'm gonna wanna come in here several times a day and check on things with them first getting going and uh, make sure the lights are working right and they're the right height for them, making sure they're getting food, making sure there's none of them that have gotten kicked off to the side or or having any problems. So the first day or two, you really just want to give them a lot of attention. And then as they get settled in, um, you can go down to a couple times a day. And they're going to stay in here. I think I was saying earlier, you know, at least two weeks, maybe three to four, depending on the weather, how much space you have. Uh, basically those two things. And um, We've actually got a yard out here that we will let them out in two to three weeks. This is a big space so they can stay in here for a little bit and make sure they get big enough. And then they're gonna go out into the yard for another week or two. And then we will move them out into the trick and tractors and get them out on grass. And these rangers, we're gonna take them to around 11, 12 weeks probably, a little bit longer than the Cornish crosses. So uh, we'll try to bring you along on that journey and uh, hope this has been informative and helped you out. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I will see you soon. Goodbye.